Hello and good morning friends. Welcome to the CEC Edisat live lecture. Dear friends, as you know that in our previous sessions, uh, we talked about the saris of India. In our previous two sessions, we talked about uh, saris of northern region as well as uh, saris of the other regions too. Today also we are going to talk on the similar topic. But today we are basically going to talk on the saris of the southern region as well as the saris of the tribal region. And for this, we have again with us in our studios Dr. Neelima Asthana, Dr. Asthana. Hana is assistant professor in Department of Education, Lady Irwin College, University of Delhi. So, dear friends, let's try to understand more about sarees. Uh, as I always say, that uh, Dr. Asthana tries to give um, the best possible input to these lectures with the help of the slides, with the help of the pictures, as well as with the help of the data which uh, she brings uh, uh, with the help of uh, her extreme, extreme labor. So, ma'am, welcome to the Edisit lecture once again. And uh, as this topic is very, very interesting. Interesting sarees of India, uh, which fascinates both the males as well as females. The females who wear these sarees and the males who gift these sarees uh, to the females. So I hope that the session uh, is uh, going to be uh, the area of interest uh, for both males and females. So over to you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. So today I will uh, continue with my previous like uh, in, pre continu in continuation of my previous lecture, which were also on sarees of India. Uh, I will uh, talk about uh, little bit on tribal uh, region sarees as well as southern region sarees. In my previous lectures, I talked about the sarees which are prevalent in western part of country, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, uh, as well as northeastern part of country and eastern part of country and little bit about the north part that is basically the uh, domination of the Banarsi sarees in India. And uh, uh, in continuation of that, uh, those two lectures, I am uh, going to give you some information about the saris of tribal region. So, tribal saris of the Eastern Deccan, actually the tribal saris uh, uh, are a bit different. If you have uh, seen the ladies wearing uh, saris in tribal areas, they usually wear a shorter length of saris and it is up to the knee length. So, I am going to uh, tell you something about those regions. Uh, first of all, which are the uh, tribal regions of the country? First, uh, there are 37 million tribal people live in the Eastern Deccan and Eastern Deccan uh, uh, you should not confuse with the Deccan that is uh, southern region. Uh, comprises of more than 80 different tribes and tribal communities like Santhal which are in Bihar, Jharkhand and West Bengal, Urao, Bihar, Jharkhand and Madhya Pradesh, Munda, uh, Bihar and Jharkhand and Gon, Orissa and Madhya Pradesh and Andhra Pradesh are the major tribes, tribal communities as well as smaller communities like Khon, Bondo and Gadaba of Orissa and Ho. Bhomej and Paharia of Bihar and Jharkhand. So, in some areas they grow cotton. Usually these tribal sarees are made up of cotton and uh, uh, though in, uh, grow in small amount and the quality is not also very good. They spin and dye it but uh, very few weaves are there. Traditional tribal sarees are short and narrow. Uh, so, these are not very much like the regular saris which are 6 feet long and uh, more than uh, 1 meter uh, uh, of width. These saris are short and narrow. These are made up of heavy, thick, unbleached cotton with single color patterning woven in uh, red majorly but sometimes purple or brown also. So, both sari designs and draping style uh, is very much different. Uh, as compared to the normal draping of the sari and it depends on the location and the tribal affiliation also. For example, in eastern part of Chota Nagpur which extends into West Bengal, tribal women traditionally wear plain white sari with a red border and simple striped end piece and it, they drape the sari in somewhat in Bengali fashion. Uh, there is no special name for Santhalis as well as Munda uh, uh, saris. Uh, simple sari with purple border is specific to Santhali saris, and these are worn as uh, bridal, bridal sari called as Khandi 
and is about 3.5 to uh, 4 meters long only. You can see the picture of these tribal ladies dancing and wearing red bordered sari. A few are wearing yellow, uh, yellow sari and few are wearing uh, white sari with uh, red border and you can see the pallu is having some kind of weave and different color also. And you can see the men also they are wearing lungi of uh, that particular uh, type which uh, um, the you can see the sari as well as lungi both are very much similar. This is again a tribal lady wearing a small sari having it is the this sari is of course in silk and uh, having brown border broad brown border and you can see she is wearing the matching blouse also but usually in tribal region they do not uh, have the matching blouse uh, blouse does not come with sari they used to wear a different type of uh, blouse of different fabric <coughs> so i will talk about munda tribe they mostly live in central and east part of the chota nagpur in addition to uh, the khanda sari, there is sangoi parla sari also, heavy elaborately woven textile with stripes, inter, uh, interlocked weft border, a large and piece with densely woven weft faced conti uh, continuous supplementary weft woven designs, most of which are geometric lozenges, diamonds and Grid. So, the pallu is having some kind some stripes, some diamond shapes of uh, structure and some grids also on the pallu. These are the munda uh, uh, dancing people of that particular tribe and you will uh, see similarity in the sari, uh, the design of the sari as well as the style of wearing of the sari amongst the tribal people. Next is uh, Orang tribe, Dravidian speaking Orang live mainly to the south and west of Chota Nagpur. Traditionally they wear sari, they call it, it kichri and draped in Dravidian style similar to Sanglo, Sangol Parla. A square shaped object often called as chalky is woven into wedding sarees. Chalky is uh, an auspicious uh, article of a wedding, so uh, it could be fine, uh, found in on the sarees also. Another motif, Singhaula also called as Machi Fool is seen. Uh, Machi Fool means uh, uh, fish flower which is uh, known as Singhaula and they uh, consider this very auspicious. So, they have this kind of motif also on their sari, especially in on the wedding sarees. This is a view of around uh, ladies and uh, men uh, dancing. Then another tribe is Gond tribe. Uh, it is towards the uh, it is towards more uh, towards the south and uh, the regions are Koraput, Bastar and Adilabad districts. These sarees are shorter than those now worn by the tribes further north. So, uh, the uh, ladies of the southern region of this uh, region, uh, they wear shorter sari than the ladies who wear in the north region of this region. <coughs> These are often knotted at the shoulder have borders and end pieces with bands of solid colors varying from bright red to dark brown. And the specific motif on the sari is full chit chalk. Uh, actually it is again they wear during the auspicious occasion or uh, marriages. So, they used to have full chit chalk yeah, means a chalk chalky and uh, flowers stacked pyramidal pattern. So, flower leopard seat typically on marriage sarees. The Mirgan community of Kotpad area in Koraput district of Odisha is known for their exquisitive organic dyed style, text, uh, uh, dyeing of textiles, 
they usually weave these textile for Bhotata, Dharua and other neighboring tribal. So, these tribal sarees are very much uh, natural, very much organic when we talk about dyeing technique of these sarees. You can see in the picture the woven dyed sari of that particular region, you can uh, find the fish on it, a kind of uh, chalky on it and these are the having a very uh, nicely woven border also and they use it during uh, festivities as well as in marriages. <coughs> Orissa is also home to a unique tradition of natural dyeing and weaving. The natural dyes, uh, this is a um, picture of natural dyer of coat pad of Orissa. So, they use natural colors to dye the sarees. Weavers of both Koraput and Bastar also produce a variety of heavy cotton tribal sari with many discontinuous supplementary motifs placed in rows in a field such as geese, leaves, snakes, axes, chokka and even such untraditional items as umbrella and aeroplane. Basically these tribal people whatever they uh, find around them and uh, see around them they used to have those motifs on the fabric also. In Bastar a long ceremonial sari used by Dharua tribe incorporates ikat dyed checkered bands as well as above motifs. As we uh, uh, discussed in our previous lecture, ikat of uh, Orissa is a very unique kind of method where we first dye the warp and weft yarns and then weave the sari. So, that kind of patterning is uh, seen in uh, this particular uh, region of the country in sarees and bastar is, uh, they use during ceremonies etc. <clears throat> now, I will discuss a few sarees which are ethnic sarees of eastern ghats. These are majorly from the plateau land and western part of eastern ghats and it includes eastern Madhya Pradesh and Nagpur west and western hills of Orissa, Orissa's eastern coastal, coastal plains also. So, sarees tend to be uh, short and narrow, cotton sarees are woven from coarse and heavy threads with low thread counts means the weaving is not very good because weaving good or bad is uh, decided by the thread count in a inch. If there are so many thread counts then weaving is definitely good and when they, we are using thick threads or yarns then obviously it is not possible to have a very fine thread count. So, thread count is really very low in these kind of sarees. Uh, borders usually carry significant amount of fine repetitive supplementary wad patterning woven as narrow uh, that is 0 0.5 to 2.5 centimeter band. So, a very narrow a uh, border is there on us uh, on these sari which are uh, which themselves are short and narrow and thick as well <coughs> now ethnic sarees of eastern mp and nagpur so these are traditionally made of heavy unbleached or white cotton with plain sometimes uh, usually red borders and striped end piece with or without supplementary warp and weft embellishment and a plain field. So, uh, you will not find enough decoration uh, in terms of weaving in these sarees and uh, the costlier version is tusser silk. Pavrai wedding sarees of the Durg district of north of Busters uh, are these supplementary weft designs of peacock, chauka and singholia are added. So, peacock is again a, uh, an auspicious motif on the sari, chauka, uh, chauki uh, which is used in marriages. So, again the motif of chauka on the sari and singholia, singholia is uh, known uh, is the term used for the uh, sindur dan, the uh, married ladies use, the, uh, use this. So, that is also added on this sari. 
Today only wealthier members of Lodi community use it if, and the costlier version is of course uh, silk and that is tussar silk. So, these are the ethnic uh, this uh, sarees of Eastern MP and Nagpur. You can see the beauty of the sari, the border and in between some motifs and a weaver. Now, the sarees of Orissa Western Hills. Uh, the area which is included in Orissa Western Hills are Sundargarh, Sambalpur, Balangir, Kalahandi and Phulbani district and uh, Sun, uh, Sambalpur and Balangir are the major handloom weaving areas of Orissa. Traditional handloom sarees woven in both cotton and tussar silk are available and today Orissan sarees are famous for the Ikat work. We discussed this in our uh, last lecture a few of the Ikat work. Uh, today I will, uh, I will give a little more information about the uh, sarees of uh, Ikat work. Now the sarees of Orish, Orissa coastal plains. Actually, in Odisha there are different regions, few are hilly region, few are coastal region and accordingly, according to the need, according to the available of the material, they weave sari in a different style and that style is being continued in those regions. So, you will find so many variety in uh, sarees of Odisha. Some sarees are uh, very costly woven on, uh, with, uh, on silk and with uh, very intricate patterns. So, very costly and as well as uh, less costly sarees are available in this region. Ikat sarees woven in mulberry, silk, tussar and cotton. And these sarees are colorful with fields of bright red or purple commonly. Most of the silk ikats are woven in Katak, Puri and then Kanal districts. The mulberry silk and tussar bandha of this area always contain numerous weft ikats in the field. Ikats as I told you earlier in my previous lecture and now also is a kind of patterning which is done after dyeing the thread and different dyed thre uh, threads or yarns are used to uh, weave this sari. And, um, and obviously the silk uh, is majorly produced in Bihar and woven in Odisha. A few places are there also in Odisha where silk is being produced, but major silk is uh, produced in Bihar and uh, transported to Odisha. <coughs> this is the Khandua Sari, uh, it is local wedding sari. Traditional has lotus flower, elephants, fantastic beasts, and creeping lotus vines depicted in the field and the border means the major ma, major the main body part of the sari as well as the pallu of the sari you can see this sari uh, the uh, kalash is there shank is there elephant is there so very uh, they have tried it to make uh, very auspicious all the religious symbols are included in this uh, pattern In this sample also you can see the uh, elephants, the uh, loin, I think the shape is of loin and uh, very much uh, the pattern, the design which is there it is very much religious in nature, flowers and uh, chalk and everything. Now the another type of sari which is uh, uh, manufactured in Orissa is Bomkoi sari, very famous. And uh, it is named after the name of the village. It is originally made for local Maharaja, aristocracy and Brahmins of the Chikti Tehsil. And in the Ganjam district a few kilometers away from Andhra Pradesh border, it is woven in heavy of often coarse low count cotton, always dyed bright in color and usually with red, black or white ground and multicolored supplementary weft and warp and pieces and borders means pallu and border are usually have multi different colors and the main body of the sari is of uh, 
red, black or white in color. So, Bomkoi Sadi is again very uh, famous of uh, uh, in Odisha and otherwise also and people try to purchase this sari with the uh, by the name. This is the Bomkoi Sadi, it is uh, woven in silk. Again, it is a Bomkoi Sadi. It is the weaving process is quite tedious of these sadis, and these sadis used to be very costly also. As I told you, it is done in cotton, but Bomkoi Sadis are also woven in silk also. <coughs> then, very different and famous Odish, uh, Sadi from Odisha are Odishan pictorial Sadi. And these pictorial Sadis are distinctive 20th century ethnic Sadis. These are multicolored and pictorial and three types of designs are available on these pictorial sarees. These are architectural, religious and landscape. All three can be seen in a single saree and mostly used for puja and religious festivals. So, the uh, designs which are available you can uh, see the, these, the designs are uh, related to architecture. So, the architecture uh, actually Odisha is not uh, not famous for uh, uh, otherwise um, for tourist purpose. It is majorly famous for the temple and the sea coast. So uh, the architecture, uh, the uh, the design which is related to architecture is basically related to the temple of. Uh, famous temple in that region of that region sun temple then religious it is a very religious place so all the designs or pictures are uh, majorly related to some uh, rituals for example you see you have seen in the previous slides shank um, uh, then um, chalky then lotus etc and landscape as odisha is ha is having very good scenic beauty so, uh, different kind of landscape designs are also there, uh, uh, available and sometimes all the three could be found in a single sari. It is a sample of uh, pictorial sari. You can see the image and try uh, and analyze it. Now come to the saris of South India. Actually, South India uh, is having rich cultural uh, culture and heritage in terms of uh, sari wearing, sari weaving, production of cotton, production of silk, and uh, different style of uh, and um, method of um, uh, making sari. And as in my previous lectures, I also uh, discussed on the dis issue of designs, and I talked to you about the Kalamkari of that particular region. So, South India is uh, having very rich culture in terms of uh, printing, dyeing as well as weaving. So, southern region covers tropical lands of Karnataka, southern Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. South is one of the major sari weaving region producing considerable quantities of rural peasant and urban middle class. Sarees in silk, cotton, rayon and polyester uh, are available and you can find very costly and very cheap sarees in that region because mostly ladies wear sari in uh, this particular region. 90 percent of mulberry silk of India produced here and uh, as southern region uh, ladies are um, ladies do wear sari as well as uh, you will find ladies in Sri Lanka also they wear sari mostly. Seri culture in south there are few major centers uh, if we talk about seri culture these are Bangalore, Kolar, Tumkur, Mysore and Mandya. Most of the silk is mechanic, mechanically reeled. So, uh, majorly the silk which is produced here is reeled mechanically and uh, very different types of uh, you can say variety of silk is available in this region and silk sarees are again of uh, different cost. First 
I will discuss with you is the sarees which are uh, available in a region called Siddhi Pet, known as Khans also. So, Siddhi Pet sarees throughout the central and west Deccan, the word Khan is used to describe figure textiles with supplementary weft and or warp patterning usually created in narrow bands which were made primarily for blouses. In northern Andhra Pradesh, it also refers to a particular type of sari uh, known as Sira Koka in Telugu, containing a mix of Central Deccan, Odisan, and Mughal style of designs, which is woven in Siddhi Pet, Jangao, and Cher uh, Cheri Cheriala, and it is in the Medak and Hyderabad district of the uh, Andhra Pradesh. Actually, now the Andhra Pradesh is divided into two parts. Uh, Simandra and Telangana, but uh, the sarees of uh, in this uh, presentation, I am talking about the sarees which is uh, in general pres uh, available in uh, Hyderabad. And as you see that uh, there is a mix of Odisan sari and uh, sa Southern sari. So, you cannot say that after Odisha, you will not find the same design in South. And uh, after south, you will not find the same design in west because all the regions are interrelated and connected. So, uh, the tradition and culture always transferred from one place to another. So, uh, a kind of mixed culture is available everywhere in India. And uh, south is having very specific culture and some uh, and Mughal styles il, is also available because of the uh, Mughal period of uh, India, you, we will f always find impression of Mughal uh, style and British style in the fabric of our country. So, this is one example of Siddhi Pet Sari. You can see the woven uh, sari, the design in between and border uh, not very broad and pallu. So, these are fine unbleached muslin. Uh, sarees, unembellished field means there is nothing uh, woven in the body, uh, body is usually clear, then thread count is very high. As I told you early, the poor thread count and high thread count, what is the uh, reason and what is the high thread count? When the uh, fiber is, uh, yarn is very fine, uh, then uh, the thread count used to be very high. And uh, as the sarees are made up of muslin fabric and muslin fabric as it is very fine cotton fabric, so th thread count used to be very high. Thread counts mean how many weft and warp yarns in a square inch, so it uh, depends on that. If there are more warp and weft yarns, so obviously the fabric is uh, fine and if there are less number of warp and weft yarns, then obviously the uh, yarn are, yarn is thick and fabric is coarse. Finally, woven <coughs> complex bands of supplementary warp patterning in the borders, it is known as aku, akka, kammi and supplementary weft in the end pieces means pallu uh, known as kongu, siragu and penta. Originally supplementary threads of different vibrantly colored silk but at present are usually cotton in one or two colors are used. So, originally on borders there used to be different colors and that is two of silk, but these days they have reduced the number from one or two only. Now, the next very important uh, sari of South India is Pochampalli Ikats. Uh, Pochampalli Ikat uh, is uh, Pochampalli is a village is a place in Nalgonda district and it is famous for its Ikat sarees. When we talk uh, we discussed Odisha sari there also we discussed Ikat sari and uh, same Ikat sarees and same style is being used in this area also it is known as Pochampalli Ikats. And woven in other towns too, these are Chirala, Golgonda and Jena, Jalna. Ikat weaving is called as Chitku and Pagdu, 
bandhu while the tie dyed yarn is known as katak booti. It shows designs closer to siddhi pet. Motifs vary from flora and foliate, floral and foliate through to depiction of everyday objects as clocks, gramophone, records and aeroplanes. It is pocham palli katsari, you can see the body as well as pallu similar type. There is a uh, little bit of uh, uh, blank fabric in between. So, this is the design, they can they uh, innovate different kind of design with the help of this particular technique. Again it is a pocham palli kat. The ikat work is on pallu as well as on border and the main body is plain. So, these days designer sarees are also available where this ikat work is uh, there on the pleats also, otherwise it is plain sometimes on blouse, sometimes on border. So, they uh, develop design sometimes on the uh, half sari width wise. So, uh, ikat basically they create ikat in the various ways. These are vibrantly colored, wide range of modern design is available as I uh, explained. Designers are there and they design sari and fabric accordingly, according to the taste of the people. Most still follow the rural layout with white plain borders, one or two plain bands marking the end piece and a field covered with ikat created designs. Uh, there is uh, another variety known as rumal. Uh, as I told you most still follow the rumal layout. Rumal, what is rumal? White plain borders surrounding a field consisting of a lattice or network of small squares created in ikats, each of which contains single motif. So, Pochampalli Kat, the design of Pochampalli Kat, you can see the white flowers, few are uh, uh, upwards and few are downwards, then diamond shapes and then there are two, th two three cl colors used in it. Accordingly, they can use different colors and this is Telia Rumal. So, so plain border and uh, the design is surrounded by the plain border. And on Pallu, uh, it is uh, a check kind of uh, design is produced through Ikat. Now, the another very uh, famous sari of uh, Andhra Pradesh region is Kalamkari sari. As I discussed in my previous lecture when I discussed about the designs, I discussed the Kalamkari work also. So, the that Kalamkari is also uh, created in uh, designs are created on sarees. Uh, so, as you all know what is Kalamkari? It is a type of hand painted or block printed cotton textile produced in parts of India and in, and in Iran. Uh, it was uh, said that during Mughal period this technique came in India from Iran and the word is derived from the Persian word galam that is known as pen and kari means craftsmanship meaning drawing with a pen galamkar. The Machli Patnam Kalamkari craft made at Pedana near Machli Patnam in Krishna district of Andhra Pradesh very much near to Vijaywada evolved with patronage of the Mughals and the Golconda Sultanate. There are two distinctive styles of Kalamkari art in India. Uh, so, first is Srikala Hasti style and that is uh, second is Machli Patnam style of art. Uh, what is Srikala Hasti? Uh, as the term suggests Hasti means hath, uh, by hand. So, kalam or pen is used for free hand drawing of the subject and filling in the colors is entirely hand worked. Uh, what is the difference between Machli Patnam style and Sri Kala Hasti? Machli Patnam these days they are, have started using blocks also. 
So, uh, Sri Kala Hasti style, uh, this style flowered around temples and their patronage and so had an almost religious identity. Scrolls, temple hangings, chariot banners and the like depicted deities and scenes taken from the great Hindu epics like Ramayana, Mahabharat, Puran and the mythological classics. Only natural dyes are used in Kalamkari and it involves 17 painstaking steps while developing the fabric. So, basically it is flourished around the temple towns and for the various uh, fabrics which were prepared for uh, temples were made through this technique. And it is a very long and tedious process of this technique. Kalamkari art has been practiced by many families in Andhra Pradesh and over the generations has constituted their livelihood. It is a sample of uh, Kalamkari sari. You can see the border as well as the main body in the same sample. Border is there, pallu is there on the left side and the main body you can see on the right hand side along with the border. Again, this is a very beautiful kalamkari of a uh, bird. Bird has been drawn with uh, leaves and uh, branches. It is the pallu which has been shown in the picture. So, other the major portion of the sari, body of the sari is plain and only the border and pallu is uh, made up of kalamkari. Again, you can see the peacock on the sari in very in a very stylish manner it has been the design has been created you can see the design again they use very natural colors which are very much um, close to the nature the birds and attractive red and blue shades again this is a kalamkari you can see the uh, picture of some religious scripture temple in on the entire pallu as well as on the border. So, in ancient times group of singers, mu musicians and painters called Chitrakatis uh, moved village to village to tell the village dwellers the great stories of Hindu mythology. Progressively during the course of history, they illustrated their accounts using large bowls, bowls of canvas painted on the spot with rudimentary means and dyes extracted from plants. Thus, the first Kalamkari had been born. In the same way, one found in the Hindu temples large panels of Kalamkari depicting the episodes of Indian mythology. It is basically cotton fabric is used, sometimes it is also being done on crepe and silk. It is uh, cotton fabric gets its glossiness by immersing it for an hour in a mixture of myro balance and cow milk. Contours and reasons are then drawn with a point in bamboo soaked in a mixture of jaggery fermented, jaggery fermented and water. One by one these are applied, then the vegetable dyes are applied. After applying each color onto the motif, the kalamkari fabric is washed after dyeing. Thus, each fabric can undergo up to 20 washes. Various effects are obtained by using cow dung, seeds, plants and crushed flowers to obtain natural dyes. <coughs> Along with buffalo milk, maro balan is used in kalamkari. Milo balan is also able to remove the odd smell of buffalo milk. The fixing agents are also available in it and can easily fix the dye or color of the textile while uh, treating the fabric. So, every not a single chemical is used in fixing of color also. Alum is used in making natural dyes and also while treating the fabric. Alum ensures the stability of the color in kalamkari fabric. This is a piece of uh, kalamkari fabric, it, it is a wall hanging. Now, the next is Gadwal Sadi of South India and Gadwal Sadis are also very important and uh, prominent Sadis, uh, very costly Sadis. Uh, basically, the major uh, area is uh, near the uh, Hyderabad. Famous Sadis of Andhra Pradesh known for their designs with interlocked 
and weft brocade borders with contrasting colors. These sarees mainly worn in religious occasions and festivals. Gadwal sari is made in cotton in a style influenced by the Banarsi weaves. While the ground of the sari is cotton, there is loosely attached silk border to it and that is why the cost of the sari is higher than the usual cotton sari. Uh, this is the cotton, uh, silk as well as cotton gadwal sari. So, copper or gold dipped zari is generally used in these sarees. The motif of the peacock and rudraksh are popular. Traditional colors for these sarees are earth shades of browns, grays and off whites. However, these days brighter shades have been introduced for North Indian buyers. It is a gadwal sari. You can see the pallu, zari pallu and the uh, body is of uh, cotton, border is of silk. Again, it is a gadwal sari, rich pallu and border. Next, very important and very popular sari of South India, and it is worldwide famous as uh, Banarsi sarees are famous, these are Kanjivaram sari. Kanjivaram sarees have a gold dipped silver thread woven on premium quality silk. These sarees are hand woven in the town of Kanchipuram in Tamil Nadu. Kanchipuram has only been weaving silk sari for the past 150 years or probably more than that. It specializes in uh, Murukku Pattu, a heavy silk sari woven with tightly twisted three ply high denier thread using thick zari threads for supplementary warp and weft patterning. Interlocked weft borders are popular. So, these silk Kanjivaram silks are very heavy, very thick and uh, very long lasting. You can see the Kanjivaram richness of Kanjivaram sari, the body the, uh, of the sari and the border of the sari. Kanjivaram sari uh, is so popular that in a very in a in every bride's uh, this dowry you will find one Kanjivaram sari definitely, and these are favored for their durability. Kanji silk is thicker than almost all other silks and is therefore more expensive. The heavier the silk, the better the quality. This is again a sample of Kanjivaram silk. The booties are also uh, in zari. It is not very much uh, visible in the picture, but booties are uh, these are the zari booties. Kanchipuram sari woven with heavy silk and gold cloth are considered to be special and are uh, worn on occasions and festivities only. Peacock, peacock and parrot are the most common. Though lightweight kanji sarees are popular is, as they are easy to wear and cost uh, little also, uh, but traditional weavers do not like to make these. While these days Korean and Chinese silk is also available and, available and suitable for lightweight sarees, machine woven. Only mulberry silk produced in Karnataka and few parts of Tamil Nadu is right for the classic Kanjivaram. You can see the beauty of this Kanjivaram sari, very heavy uh, zari pallu. A single Kanchipuram sari can cost anywhere between 2500, 39 US dollar to almost a lakh or more than that. And it depends on the intricacy of work, color, pattern, material used like zari. It, if it is gold and silver, then obviously the cost used to be very high. And since 2005, Kanchipuram sarees are protected by the Geographica indication label certifying their origin. According to legends in Hindu mythology, Kanchi silk weavers are the descendants of sage Markanda the master weaver of gods who is supposed to have woven tissues from lotus fiber. Also while cotton is considered to be the favorite fabric of Lord Shiva, silk was preferred by Lord Vishnu. So weaving method is uh, very different, very typical. To weave a Kanchipuram sari, three shuttles are used. While the weaver works on the right side, his aide works on the left side shuttle. 
the border color and design are usually quite different from the body. In if the pallu has to be woven in a different shade, it is first separately woven and then delicately attached to the sari. The part where the body meets the pallu is often denoted by a zigzag line. And usually in heavy Kanjivaram sarees, they prefer to attach the pallu and uh, it just adds the um, value to the sari. Themes and motifs usually suns, moons, chariot, peacocks, parrots, swans, lions, coins, mangoes, leaves and many such motifs are woven into Kanchipuram patterns. Other common motifs include a jasmine bud without, within a square or a round frame locally uh, known as mal, uh, Malayangu. Another is Thandavalam where parallel lines run across the body of the sari. So, social culture, a movie is also there named Kanchivaram was released in 2008 and it is a period movie set in the pre-independence era in a small town of Kanchivaram in Tamil Nadu. The movie depicts the pitiable state of the silk weavers in the town of Kanchipuram as they were under unorganized and marginalized to live a perpetual hand to mouth existence. The movie depicts their struggles and ends with a comment about the cooperative movement that emerged to take care of the interests of the worker and it is very important to preserve the culture of that particular area otherwise people will not uh, get these sarees to wear anymore if we do not take care of the weavers of that particular region. The next important South Indian sari is Konad sari. Uh, it is uh, famous for the white border usually from 10 to 40 centimeters woven in plain color with narrow bands of supplementary warp patterning known as Kempi or Petu positioned between 3 centimeter each border edge. Body of the sari traditionally contains a woven pattern, usually checks or stripes. End piece means pallu contains either a series of widely spaced zari stripes or in most expensive and, and supplementary weft figuring. A wide band usually zari with weft by strangler points woven in the interlocked technique is also commonly found in the end piece and is called as reku. In expensive silk conards, the borders are also woven in the interlocked weft techniques either with a straight edge or with various styles of triangular motifs called makku or flower bird. Many conard sarees are named after the color of the borders. For example, arakku sari has a lac dyed red border and a pudapayalam Karavi a yellow serrated border. So, sarees are also named after the color of the border. You can see the Konad sari or temple sari is also a speciality item from Tamil Nadu. These sarees were originally woven for temple deities. Again a Konad sari specific. You can see the border and the pallu. So, traditional Konad sari are used to be 7 to 9 meters in length, mostly they, because they wear in a very different style. So, length is too uh, much, mostly woven in eastern, east of eastern Tamil Nadu, Salem, Kanchipuram, Arni, Madras, Kumbakonam and Tanjavur. Other special sarees of south which I, which I am not able to explain due to shortage of time are uh, Lakal Sadi, Karnataka, Mysore Silk, Mula Kam, uh, Kalmuru Sadi, Kanchipuram, ye, this I have discussed with you, Kumkonam, Thirubhavanam, Tanchor, Madurai, Koyamtur Cotton, Chinnala Pattu of Sungudu, Sungudi, Tamil Nadu, Balrampuram, Kerala, Mundam, uh, Neriyatham, Kerala, Pochampalli, Telangana, Gadwal Sadi to some extent I discussed, Mangalgiri and Venkatgiri very famous cotton and silk sari of Andhra Pradesh, very fine cotton, Dharmavaram silk sari of Andhra Pradesh and uh, Narayan Pet of Telangana or Maharashtra. 
and very briefly I will uh, inform you, uh, I can say I am going to inform you only about the Central Indian Sari. Uh, these are very famous because these are too famous these days, people love to wear Chanderi and Maheshwari Saris. And these, the Chanderi Sari from Madhya Pradesh is light and meant for Indian summers. It is made in silk or fine cotton with patterns taken from Chanderi temples of Madhya Pradesh. Uh, the Maheshwari sarees are also both in cotton and silk, usually green or purple with a zari border. The traditional block printed tusser can also be found in contemporary designs nowadays. And Chanderi, Maheshwari, Kosa and Dhokra silk, these are all special sarees of Madhya Pradesh. So with uh, these details, I wish to... Uh, stop here, finish my lecture here because there is so much because India is a vast country. People love to wear sari and each area has its specific own uh, uh, designs and it is impossible to discuss everything in these three lectures. So Definitely, I but uh, uh, whatever input you have given in these three lectures, I hope that it would be beneficial for all the students who might have watched us with the help um, of these uh, lectures. And I would like to tell you all that if you want to access this uh, particular lecture, you can access it with the help of YouTube, as we daily say, that we upload our uh, lectures so that it becomes convenient for you. Because likewise, you uh, flip the pages of the uh, book number of times, uh, so you can uh, the, uh, watch these lectures uh, continuously anytime uh, anywhere with this note uh, thank you ma'am thank you so very much for giving us deep insight into this very topic and dear friends if you have uh, any questions or if you have uh, any feedback you can mail us at info.cc at the rate nick.in and um, we hope that in future we would be taking up a very new topic and yeah. we would be discussing something new so that it becomes beneficial for you to study your course material once again very very thank you ma'am thanks a lot